This isn't just a 911 and it isn't just a Turbo S. It's a Turbo S with the lightweight package and these videos look great. They're shot in 4K. Watch it on your television, okay? Let's do this. Its silhouette alone is the symbol of performance anywhere on planet Earth. A shape that's river rock perfect. Porsche's 911 is the sports car's sports car, and even though some might consider the 992 more of a grand touring car, there's far more capability than smart people will explore on public roads, especially when it comes to this particular model, the Turbo S, which is the 911's 911, and priced accordingly. 911 Turbo S starts at $205,000. At that price, might as well option it properly. This one's 223 is tested. That's what, five fully optioned Miatas? And yet there is value here. There are cars twice the price that don't offer the lofty performance of the Turbo S, especially this one with the lightweight package at 10,300 bucks. It shaves off the weight of a fourth grader, some 65 pounds. This Jenny Craig plan has advantages and disadvantages. It orients the attitude of the car towards the featherweight track-oriented GT3. There's less sound insulation. The back seat, if you can call 911 set up that, is removed and the lightweight glass eliminates eight pounds on its own. This isn't paying more for less. It lifts the car's athletic ability. Every eliminated ounce is sacred. Is this quick? is this quick. Uh, try violently fast, zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds in launch control, according to car and driver. You'll hit 100 miles an hour before you can say, officer, I didn't know it would go that fast. Seriously. Porsche's official time for the dash is 2.6 seconds. This cuts a couple tenths off the old turbo's run. The throttle pedal is basically a speed rheostat. The velocity you want to go is always a second or two away from reality. This snaps off the quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds at 139 miles an hour on its way to a top speed of 205. One of the many reasons I like Porsche sports cars is the sound of the engine is coming from behind and I would love to demonstrate the sound, but even accelerating like this, I am like three times over the speed limit. That's how fast this car is. Velocity and capability are so effortless, it's easy to find yourself significantly over the speed limit on a regular basis. Ask me how I know. With the lightweight package, there is noticeably more engine and road noise coming into the cabin, and you can look at this two ways. One, you buy a Porsche to get the aural experience, or two, skip the lightweight package and this is a better Grand Tour. It's up to you. You're an adult, you'll figure it out. I've gotten ahead of myself. Here's the hardware behind the lofty numbers. The Turbo S has a special 3.8 liter flat six boxer engine that, as advertised, is turbocharged. Twin turbos, actually, with variable vanes unique to turbo and sport classic models in 911s. That's the sound of 640 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. And it gets better with the optional sport exhaust. That's more like it. The Turbo S switches gears with the famed eight-speed PDK automatic transmission. You'll need to switch to other 911s for a manual. This is an all-wheel drive car that can send up to 368 pound-feet of torque to the front wheels. You might have noticed water on the road. Using acoustical sensors in the wheel wells, this can automatically switch into wet mode. There's also the usual Sport and Sport Plus, too. Sport Chrono Package is standard, so Sport Response will give 20 seconds of maximized power delivery. The binders are improved carbon ceramic disc brakes, the first 911 with 10-piston calipers. 
With my driveway, I'd order the front lift kit with location memory. There's a bunch of active aero on this car, including the front splitter, grill shutters, and this. Who doesn't love this visual and the downforce it provides at high speed? Bolting off the line never gets old in the Turbo S. Even on slightly damp pavements, all-wheel drive and launch control provide drama-free sprints. I don't think I need to tell you that the Turbo S is incredibly capable, but what might surprise you is it's never squirrely, it's never harsh. This could be a daily driver. I took it on all sorts of errands this week because I wanted to drive it as much as possible. Of course I did, this is an amazing car. That's not to say this serves up S-Class Kush. The suspension is firm, as expected, even set towards comfort. But thrilling supercar performance can be dialed back to grocery getter mode if you need to pick up a gallon of milk right quick. The new Porsche Active Suspension Management reacts quicker now. An optional PASM Sport suspension lowers the ride height by 10 millimeters. I love the steering in this machine. It's precise, it's accurate, move the wheel a little bit and it responds, but not like a caffeinated kitten. It's relaxed, on center feel is locked down. This would be a good GT car. Maybe not with the lightweight package. It's a little loud for that, but uh, the regular Turbo S would be awesome. There's satisfaction in knowing the 911's design with its flared fenders is always a fashion forward statement. In most cars, that doesn't matter from behind the wheel. This coupe always reminds you of its shape. Not sure if this translates, but looking over the hood and seeing that fender line, that is just a beautiful thing. I'd buy this car just to look at that. And back to power. If you've never experienced it at this level, Passing ability like this is better than, well, just about anything. Giving this car up, I'll be going through withdrawal. I get it, there are gonna be people who want a manual transmission, but the PDK is such a brilliant gearbox. Amazingly fast, precise shifts, always in the right gear. It's telepathic on the track. This will give you the maximum performance. It's a great gearbox. There is a fuel saving automatic engine stop start system. Yes, even Porsche has that. It's interesting, sometimes it'll shut down as you're coasting to a stop. That time it didn't. It's pretty smooth. It can be easily turned off. Um, hey, let's check out the brakes because brakes will save your bacon. Oh, okay. That is as violent as the acceleration. That's gonna leave a mark. These brakes are awesome. True, this is a very expensive aspirational machine approaching a quarter of a million dollars as tested, you know, with options. Ferrari's Portofino begins at that price and the German arguably has superior performance. The savings can be used for gas. Wanna save fuel in a Porsche? You might go with the Taycan, this one not so great as you would imagine. The EPA average is 17 MPG and it does take premium fuel. I think if you can afford one of these, you can afford the gas. The cockpit of the 992 generation 911 gets a more horizontal layout that broadens the visual. It might look wide, but this is a sports car. No delusions, it has minivan-like space, okay? Porsche is happy to customize a vehicle any way an owner wants. <laughs> It'll cost. Colored seat belts in silver gray are 540 bucks. The tachometer in white is 420. That kind of upcharging. The one-piece carbon fiber shell seats that are part of the lightweight package are not to be chosen lightly. The backs don't adjust for angle and the extreme bolstering makes entry and exit challenging, even for young people. No heat or venting either. Think long and hard about this setup if you plan on using your Turbo S for traveling a lot. This is about three quarters the size of a carry-on suitcase and it just fits between the seats here the only way it'll go back. So 
not very practical. Really, it's not about space. There's a good amount of room back here. It's all about access. This being a sports car, storage cubbies are on the small side. Consider a Macan or Cayenne if you need storage and space. You've probably noticed, but I'll point out that the materials are top tier. This doesn't have casual voice commands. You can't just say, hey, Porsche, I need directions to a Mexican restaurant because nothing happens. You have to push the button. I need directions to a Mexican restaurant. Searching for Mexican at the location. Please select a line number. Number three, it's a good place. POI was accepted. Would you like to start route guidance? Yes. The Bose system packs some punch. The additional cabin noise takes some of the pleasure out of it. The interface screen can be customized by users. It's easy to do. Screen response is excellent. And there aren't many hard buttons, but the right ones are here. Between them and the voice controls, everything's easy to get to. The charge pad keeps your phone out of reach. It might keep people from using their devices while carving up roads. And it still can be used. Just call up Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. I have no Costco shopping to do, and there's no way I'm gonna get a pack of the two-ply past those seats into the cargo hold. So no TP trunk test this week. One pack of softness and absorbency would drop into here pretty easily. Those have the dimensions of a carry-on suitcase. I could get two modest sized bags in here, no sweat. Let's wrap this up with red light, green light. Green light, dollar for dollar, it's tough to beat the lofty performance of the 911 Turbo S. Handling and steering are up there with the best I've driven. If you've ever wondered what perfect build quality looks like, here's a prime example. And the only vehicle more instantly recognizable worldwide is the Jeep Wrangler. Yellow lights, when it comes to the lightweight package, yes, it eliminates 65 pounds, but costs over 10,000 bucks. It lets wonderful complex engineering sounds into the cabin. Not everyone will want the extra decibels. It's surprisingly docile considering its capability. Don't expect classic Buick cushiness though. Red light, some will lament the lack of a manual transmission. The one-piece carbon fiber seats reduce the 911's everyday usability. Excellence doesn't come cheap, and options like $540 colored seat belts seem excessive. Owners won't care, but environmentalists won't like the fuel economy. It's too bad something this refined, powerful, and attractive is so elusive to the average buyer. Then again, warp speed in the hands of everyone might not be the best idea. Maybe the price is a good gatekeeper. If you have the money and the patience to wait for one of these, yeah, even at this lofty price, there's a waiting list for Turbo S's. This is a good investment. It's a supercar, but it's an everyday driver. It does everything well. The only question is, lightweight package or no lightweight package? Personally, I think I'd skip it because it is only 65 pounds and the added insulation makes this a better GT car. I would love to drive the 911 Turbo Cross Country. Even in base trim, the sports car's sports car is a reach for most of us. The Turbo S elevates the 911 to dream car status. If you need a specific reason to want to make a lot of money, Porsche is happy to supply the motivation. A quick story for you. I grew up in northern Minnesota, Duluth to be specific, where the most exotic car we ever saw was a Cadillac. I specifically remember coming around a corner onto Superior Street, seeing the first Porsche I had ever laid eyes on. And it was a brown 911 Turbo, first generation. Now to a kid in the land of 10,000 lakes, it looked like a spaceship. There are those moments that car enthusiasts remember forever. That's one of them for me. It's one reason the turbo is especially near and dear to my heart. A car like this deserves extra attention to details. So I have the A-team helping me out. As always, thank you, Martin Campbell, Rob Calero. Anybody want to try getting in out of the seats for me? No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm too old for that. <laughs>
Call back. <laughs> <laughs> right. These guys help me out all day long, and then I try to embarrass them by telling them to try to get in and out of those seats. Honestly, check those out before you buy, okay? This is the end, and I don't have any new Porsche fun facts for you, so I'm going to leave you with full disclosure. The performance figures that I used in this piece are from Car and Driver. They're kind of the gold standard. And the reason I use those is I have no way to properly test this car on public roads. It's insanely capable, okay? Um, you know, I had a great time with it, and I pushed it, but you never know what's around that super fun corner. It might be kids playing. It might be cyclists. And as a former news photographer, you don't want to know the horrors and the carnage that I've seen, the aftermath of car crashes, talking to law enforcement that have to notify the next of kin. It's really sad stuff. So I want you guys to be careful. I want you guys to be safe. So please, if you're going to explore the limits of your vehicle, do it on a track, okay? That's the end of the dad speech. <laughs> Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm pretty active there. And if you have a question and you can't find the answer on the interwebs, leave it in the comments. I'll try to get to it, but uh, you know, 165,000 subscribers, I get a lot of those. I can't answer all of them. It's like drinking from a fire hose. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.